Journalist Shelley Kittleson joins us now live in Baghdad. Shelley, if the prime minister were to resign, wouldn't that be exactly what Muqtada al-Sadr wants? Um, I'm not sure that th that would really be the case. What the um, opposition to Saad, the, the, the so-called Iran-backed um, coordination framework, uh, they are the ones that would like to see Kadhimi out of office. Um, they are the ones that have long been against him. We have to remember when Kadhimi came in as prime minister in May of 2020, um, they were the ones that were very much against this. Um, some months before, if we remember, in January of 2020, the U.S. conducted a drone strike here in Baghdad, which killed uh, Iranian General Qasem Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis. Um, now, these were men who were seen as heroes by many of the leaders within the coordination framework. The coordination framework, which is the um, close to the Iran-backed uh, militias, some of whom have brigades within the government uh, popular mobilization units, but they should not be confused or we should not consider them the popular mobilization units and, and that's all because they have men fighters outside of the government uh, body, which is the popular mobilization units. Um, so yeah, these are the people who would like to see Kadhimi out of office. Um, it's not so much Sadr who wants this to happen. I mean, Sadr to some extent has has spoken and, and collaborated more with Kadhimi than they have. Um, Kadhimi uh, was prior to being a prime minister, the head, well, he's still, I mean, supposedly technically the head of the Iraqi National Intelligence Service. He was put in this position in 2016 um, at the height of the war against ISIS. Um, so he's not a politician. He's someone out of politics. He has, since uh, taking office in 2020, tried to reduce tensions, tried to bring in negotiations. I mean, that's really why he was chosen, um, because he wasn't with any specific party. Um, it was in late 2019 when we saw the massive protests that brought down the previously elected government. Um, those protests started in October of 2019. Um, and in October of last year, we had another round of elections, finally. Uh, but we have still not managed to see another government be brought in because of this fighting between mostly Sadr, whose party did get the largest share, uh, but he did not get a majority, and the um, and the Iran-backed coordination framework. Uh, so, yeah, it's been quite a long time. Um, there was always a risk with Sadr supporters in the thousands uh, protesting in the green zone. Um, I mean, I was there for the mass prayer on the 5th of August, and there were definitely thousands there. And the coordination framework uh, supporters across the river um, camped out. So there was always this sort of uh, fear of, of violence breaking out for the past month, but it never did until, until Monday, clearly. Um, so yes, Kadhimi is seen more as a negotiator. He's been criticized for the most part because of his supposed weakness. Um, it's again, uh, the leaders within the coordination framework, the Shia rivals to Muqtada Sadr, who are accused of being involved in his uh, attempted, in an attempted assassination uh, against Kadhimi in November of last year. Um, so these are the major actors. And so, yeah, it's difficult uh, to say how uh, Sadr will react if Kadhimi does, um, does leave. But he has, of course, warned that he will take his, he called it his, uh, the moral and patriotic decision to vacate his position. Um, so that could potentially be very destabilizing, I think, for Iraq. Um, but at the moment, no one really has an idea of how to get out of this, this current stalemate. Right. All right. Thanks very much.